back to my channel. This is Amber's World. And if you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I'm so glad that the fates have brought us together. I'm so glad that you pressed play on this video and decided to give me and this lovely channel a chance. Thank you. And for those of you who are already part of my family, welcome back, y'all. It's been a while. Really, it's haven't been a while, but it's been too long. All right, I'm clowning. I'm in a really good mood, y'all, because I am off work today and I finally have the time to record these videos for y'all. So today I'm speaking to a very specific audience, the people who are curious about becoming a flight attendant and are curious about whether or not they should apply for a regional carrier or they should apply for a mainline carrier. And I'm just going to give my own personal opinions, thoughts, insights, because I was a regional flight attendant and I also am currently a mainline flight attendant. So I have a pretty unique take on it because I have experienced both worlds. I have experienced the best and the worst of both worlds, though I am pretty new at my mainline carrier, but I think about I've, I've experienced enough to be able to tell you um, the similarities and differences between working for a regional and a mainline. So let's get into it. The biggest difference between regional and mainline carriers is the pay. Yes, you will get paid more working for a mainline carrier. I'm sure that is not a secret, but for those of you who didn't know, now you know. Um, the starting pay for a regional, you're looking at anywhere from like $16 to $20 an hour. And for a mainline carrier, you're looking at a starting pay of $24 to um, $35 an hour. That's just me giving a very vague pay range. But the point is, is that there is a difference in pay. And every contract is different. Every pay scale is different you have to kind of do your own research regarding that. Um, one of the biggest factors for why I left my regional carrier was the fact that um, the pay wasn't what I was looking for. And I wasn't willing to stay at my regional carrier um, long enough to make a living wage. If I'm gonna be quite honest, I, I was just like, you know, I work way too hard and I'm way too old to be making this kind of money. I need to find a career that is going to stabilize me. And y'all, I have no issues being transparent about that. We all have to eat and we all have to, uh, you know, keep the lights on and be able to pay our rent and be able to maintain whatever lifestyle that we desire. Another difference between regional and mainline is the fleet. In a regional carrier, you're looking at about three different aircrafts that you have to learn how to operate. So for me, at least for my regional carrier, we operated three um, aircrafts, the CRJ-200, the CRJ-700, and the CRJ-900. But in a mainline carrier, um, you're looking at a, a, a bigger fleet. You're looking at domestic aircrafts and international aircrafts. So be prepared if you are going from a regional to a mainline, that you're gonna be learning a lot more aircrafts. And uh, you know, it's it's gonna be a little bit more work to memorize and understand and learn um, the aircrafts that you're gonna be operating on. But y'all, it is so much fun. I love getting to know all the different fleet um, in my mainline carrier. It was That was one of the best parts about training for me. But yes, you're going to be working with more planes slash more aircraft and a mainline uh, carrier. Another difference is going to be quality of life. Yeah, quality of life is different. Now, you know, there are people who work at a regional carrier who have no issues with their quality of life, who are thriving. Um, and there are people who are in mainline as well who are thriving and you know, I can only speak from my experience. I can say that the lifestyle working in a mainline carrier is very nice. The hotels are nicer, the layovers are nicer. Um, I already mentioned that the pay is nicer. Um, it's just it's just an elevated uh, 
an elevated career. That's that's really all I can say, really. Your choice on whether to go regional or mainline are gonna be different from other people's. I know some people who only want to work for a regional carrier because they don't wanna do international. Quiet as it's kept, not everybody wants to fly international. There are people who work for mainline who don't want to do international trips. So don't think that everybody who goes to a mainline, you know, is only trying to go for the international trips. Some people don't wanna do it. So keep that in mind. There are people who choose to go regional because you know they like being on reserve all the time. They like having an unpredictable schedule. Some people don't want to work as much. And you know, some people just, it goes along with their lifestyle. At least that's like the general feedback that I've gotten when I work for my regional carrier. Some people like the lifestyle and being able to have more flexibility um, in a regional carrier. Um, and there are people who find that they have plenty of flexibility in a main line. I think that there's flexibility in both tiers. Um, honestly, it's just about what you want. A reason why I wanted to go to main line as well was because I was tired of being on reserve all the time. When you are at main line, you already have a line. Now you're gonna have reserve days, but it's not gonna be nearly as much as you would have if you were in a regional carrier. So keep that in mind. Um, and for those of you who are not sure about the whole reserve thing, basically reserve is you're basically put on standby at home or at the airport. And you kind of just have to wait around for scheduling to call you and give you an assignment versus when you have a line, you already have trips lined up, you already know where you're going. You have more control over your schedule because you know what's coming up and you know what you're doing. And reserve, not so much. You're either sitting around um, and you're limited on the things that you can do because when you get that call, they expect you to report within a certain time. And when you are airport standby, well, you're just sitting at the airport hoping to get called to. And if you don't get called, well, you just go back home. Um, and every contract is different. You might still get paid a minimum pay um, or not. I can't speak for all airlines. I'm just speaking in general terms and from my own personal experience. So whether you choose to go regional or mainline, again, I wanna emphasize that this is a personal decision. Everybody's reasons are different. I have mine, you'll have yours. Um, but one thing that I really want to drive home is not one is better than the other. Regional flight attendants are just as important and just as needed and, are, and work just as hard as mainline flight attendants. One does not hold more value than the other. It really is on what you are looking for out of your career and what you want to do as a flight attendant. That's the biggest thing that I can emphasize about this career. What makes it so special is that it's, it's, it's a very personalized career. You get out of being a flight attendant when you make it. So I want you to keep those big uh, differences and similarities in mind when you are applying. Some of you are just gonna apply anywhere and everywhere and just whoever says yes first is what you're going for. Some of you are probably a little bit more calculated and are really are weighing your options. I really want you to um, not go off of what social media says, what you see on other channels, but I really want you to do your research in every company that you apply for and every um, regional or mainline carrier that you uh, are going for because you might go to a mainline and be like, I should have went for a regional. And you might go for a regional, but then like, man, I should have really applied to be mainline. So don't settle, um, know what you're getting into. And hopefully this video was somewhat helpful.